Hello, everybody. Bengala Tunji here. So today we shall look at the role of the chairman of the board, chief executive officer's roles, and non-executive officer's roles. We are still studying the board of directors, still discussing corporate governance. The board of directors, we had to look at the role of the board itself. Also, the composition of the board had been looked at. So, if you are not part of us then, you are welcome. But please, go and look for the videos, the tutorials, lectures on these two topics that we've treated. Because today we are going to be looking at the roles of the chairman of the board of directors, chief executive officer's role, and the NED, that is non-executive director's role. So under non under under this topic rather, we'll be looking at the separation of power between the chairman and the chief executive officer. Of course, we are going to examine the roles of the chairman itself and the chief executive officer and NEDS, that is non-executive director's roles. We are going to study the role of the chief executive officer itself. We are going to study the role of the board chairman and don't forget that when we're talking about the, the board, we have two types of the board, which we've discussed. The unitary board and the two-tier board, which we can call bilateral. So we are going to examine the role of the board. What I'm pointing that out is when we are discussing the unitary, the board chairman may differ from the supervisory board chairman please check the video to know more so that we can move on also we are going to examine the non-executive director's role then the appointment of the net that is non-executive directors also we are going to examine the viable criticism of non-executive directors being appointed on the board of directors of a company. So if you are just joining us, we are from G James Associates and my name is Gwengaola Tunji. Please subscribe to the channel, like us, comment, click notification button. When you do this, you are putting yourself in the position of receiving alerts when we release new videos and tutorial lectures, which definitely by the grace of God we are going to do. Also, also because we are building community together, when you are part of us, people around you can easily be reached. So you put them in advantage too to get information from us. And also you are encouraging us to do more. Because when you subscribe to us, then we can reach more crowd, even from your hand. Please go and subscribe now. And if you've been part of all but yet to subscribe, we had like that you subscribe too. Okay, so after this topic that we are treating now, we will be looking at the directors and the law. The directors and the law will be coming next. Okay, so now let us go to the business of the day. The role of the chairman.
So before we talk about the role of the chairman, let us quickly examine the separation of power and the reason power must be separated between the chairman and the chief executive officer. These two people are most prominent and most powerful in any organization. And because the board of directors actually are there to drive the organization in form of governance and to success, these two people are key. And for this objective of the setup of the board to actually be achieved, we must ensure separation of power. So that at the end of the day, what we do not intend in setting up the board is not what we eventually get. So power must be separated and as for best, best practices all over the world, corporate governance is a universal topic. So best practices from UK, from US, from Netherlands, Singapore, name the country even Nigeria here. So best practices ensure that we separate the power between the chairman and the chief executive officer. This is to ensure that we avoid the risk of one person becoming mighty than everybody in the board. So that there could be check and balances. So therefore, the chief executive officer must know his or her duty and the chairman too must know his or her duty. The role of the chairman and the chief executive officer must always be separated and must know, the power must not reside in a singular person. So that no individual will be come too powerful for the organization. In Nigeria here, the corporate code of governance states clearly that for any listed company on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the CEO, Chief Executive Officer, should not go to become the chairman of the board. This may actually have its disadvantage, but this is just to ensure that if anybody has been coming from the rank and file of the organization and has become the chief executive officer. So if the person move at the end of the day to become the chairman, having known and having worked with almost everybody in the organization, especially the management level staff, the tendency is there that everybody will want to listen to him or her than to criticize his or her move and the company can be at disadvantage. But the criticism concerning this one is that if the CEO eventually wants to move on to do something with his or her life and the organization knows very sure that there are benefits to be derived in retaining this man and this woman. So they may want to give him a chairmanship seat rather than lose him or her completely. So that the advantage can still be achieved. But as per corporate code, stated categorically that it's better to release the person to move on. So, what is your thought about that? Let me leave it for you at that. And I decided to hear your comments concerning that. Even though the code has the objective of ensuring that the chairman does not go to become chairman, uh, the CEO rather does not go up to become chairman and become dominion. It has its disadvantage too because a lot of work experience will go with him or her 
if they eventually just release the person and we've seen some cases in which the person actually moved on to become a very powerful competitor let me hear your opinion concerning this okay the role of the chairman of the board now so this man or woman sits at the apex of the organization having the highest authority and this person actually if we can use it this word is like the advertiser of the organization is the promoter i'm not talking about promoter and promo founder now but is the promoter he, he advertises or she advertises the image of the organization so is is the face of the organization people buy from horse because they know he or she is at the hem of a fear of the organization so the business gurus are always used as the chairman of the board people that have name captain of industries are usually used as chairman of the board of director so the chairman first of all is the leader of the board i think we should establish that the role of the chairman first of all and primarily is leadership he leads the entire organization the board of director and spiral down to the lowest level so he or she must set the agenda for the board discussion as a leader he or she must set discussion for the ag agenda for the board discussion or board meeting he must ensure that every director in the organization receives accurate timely and clear information this is key must ensure that everybody gets information accurately and on time also as per need basis but must ensure especially when it comes to the directors that they have full disclosure information must get to them accurately and on time and clearly so we are talking about transparency here now which is important in corporate governance especially when we're talking about the non-executive directors because they are not always on ground chairman must ensure that clearer information gets to them accurately and on time so chairman is responsible for communication we are not saying is the secretary now but the secretary must work with him or her to ensure communication especially to the shareholders so he sees or she sees to communication prompt accurate direct clear information being sent out chairman must ensure that every board member contributes is or our home quarter so when we are talking about performance evaluation the chairman must ensure that it takes place must monitor everybody's performance and ensure that everybody is accountable and when there are controversial issues or discussions sensitive discussions which definitely will will take place the chairman must see to it that there is no rivalry rancor and the like everybody is objective and that orderliness is maintained in the boardroom 
So let us look at the Chief Executive Officer's role. The Chief Executive Officer's role. Basically, this man or this woman leads the management team. This man or this woman leads the management team. Unlike that of chairman's role that leads the entire organization. The CEO sees to daily execution of activities and leads the management team. So that is why we call him or her chief executive officer because he or she must always be on ground. So the CEO is a leader in his or her own right too and is the leader of the organization's daily activity. He works directly with the management staff and other managers in the organization. So let us say, ex assume we practice in this organization, two-tier board system. So the CEO will be the leader and the chairman of the management board. Maybe I should come against Lulu. Let's say, for example, a particular organization practices two-tier board system. I said, in that case, the chairman or the management board will be the chief executive officer. Why the chairman of the supervisory board is going to be the chairman of the board. In that wise, the CEO will be representing the management staff and will be reporting to the supervisory board. Okay. So let us compare. For example, in the exams, or even in real life, you could be asked, what are the differences between the role of the chairman and the chief executive officer? So let's quickly compare the two roles. The CEO is a full-time officer. Of the organization and that is why we call them chief executive officer they are always on ground on daily basis but the chairman is a part-time officer and plays a part-time role even though the role is so critical but the chairman does not necessarily need to be always on ground he could, she could, she may, she may not, he may, he may not. Okay. Another difference is who reports to who. For the CEO, the executive management staff reports to him or her. But when it comes to that of the chairman of the board, the CEO reports to the chairman and the secretary does likewise. So the CEO and the secretary report to the chairman while the chairman reports to the shareholders and other necessary stakeholders. The reportee of the CEO are the management staff so another thing 
The CEO is the leader of the management staff while the chairman is the leader of the company or the organization. So the chairman leads the board while the CEO, chief executive officer, reports to the board on the activity of the executive management staff. The CEO also needs to draft and propose plan, budgets, strategy, and the like for board's approval. But it is the chairman's responsibility to ensure smooth running and that the budgets, the strategy, and the like were approved by the board. So the CEO drafts, the chairman ensures approval. Implementation of the strategy belongs to the CEO. Key strategy and monetary and governance belongs to the chairman. Chairman ensures that everybody works together on the board and the CEO ensures that everybody works together when it comes to the management of the organization. The chairman sees to it that the board fulfills its role as the board of director of an organization, while the CEO sees to it that the management staff or the management board fulfills its role to the organization. So, having looked at the role of the chairman, the role of the executive chief executive officer, and the comparisons of their role, let us examine the role of non-executive officers the role of non-executive officers. So who are non-executive directors? These are directors. These are people, knowledgeable people, skillful people from different background, from different field, from different perspective and industry which the organization has come value for to lead and contribute to the success of the organization. So they are not staffer and they are not there on daily basis. And that is the reason they are called non-executive officers or non-executive directors, NEDS. So Ned could be called the policeman on the board. The non-executive directors could be called the policeman on the board. And as policemen, <laughs> just as we all know, as policemen, they are to bring balance and order into the discussion of the board. So they are to constructively contribute and challenge constructively the board discussion. Don't forget that they are coming from the background of not being staff or executive. They are non-executive. They are not always on ground. And many of them, if not majority of the non-executive officer ordinarily should be independent independent directors so their critical role is to contribute constructively and ensure balance balance of perspective balance of debate balance of discussion within the board of directors so equally some of their roles now we talk about strategy they should challenge 
the strategy. Don't forget what strategy actually means. So they should challenge the strategy at the apex level. Also, the non-executive directors should ensure performance evaluation of the executive management staff. So, appraisal, performance evaluation, they should be on top of the game. Risk management too, they should ensure and evaluate, evaluate the risk or risk areas in the operations of the organization. That is, risk factors. How are they mitigating it? Who is responsible for mitigation? Who is responsible for monitoring and the like? All are parts of things that ordinarily the NED should contribute to. Also, non-executive officers should see to remuneration of the executive management staff. Appointment of senior managers, appointment of new directors, succession plan, and the like. Non-executive directors should see to this and many more. And because of the contribution of non-executive directors, ordinarily, the cost the agency cost should come down. The agency cost should come down. So what is agency cost? We've discussed it already. But agency cost simply means the factors that the directors may not fully do what ordinarily they should do to enhance the success of the organization. That is, self-interest may come in but the non-executive directors should mitigate against this and that is why when we introduce them i said they are policemen so when non-executive directors are fully participating the agency costs should come down so let us go to uk code of corporate governance in uk so when it comes to non-executive directors, the code even goes a bit further that among the non-executive, a senior non-executive director should be appointed who leads the pack of non-executive. And we can call him senior independent director, <laughs> CID. CID means another thing in Nigeria here, but in the UK, when it comes to discussion about corporate governance, we'll be talking about senior independent director. The role of the senior independent director is, is key, especially when it comes to some discussions around sensitive matters unusual circumstances, unusual discussion, like if there is a dis disagreement between the board chairman and a major shareholder, or discussion that needs to be away from the executive directors. Don't forget that we are talking about non-executive directors. So sensitive matters that need to be discussed outside the jurisdiction of the executive officers or executive directors. These are some of the jurisdiction and domain of the non-executive directors in which senior independent directors should superintend over. How are the non-executive directors appointed? Actually, there should be a formal written down, laid down principle and policy as regards who and who could be selected to join the board as non-executive director. 
So it should be a formal appointment with which should have its own checklist. And they must ensure that any person that will join meets the criteria. It is important. Non-executive directors must be selected from the wide range of different background, exposure, business idea, business background, skill, knowledge, profession. So this bring robust diversity into the discussion and decision making of the board of directors. So non-executive directors coming from different backgrounds actually will assist and aid the organization as a whole and the board specifically. And of course, as years roll by, at a point, the independent directors may not be that independent again. And that is one, another area of best, best practice that we must ensure rotation and the reappointment and disengagement of directors, especially the net, the non-executive directors. So let us see, for example, the first three years of appointment. Then after the first three years, another reappointment for the next three years, making six years that the non-executive directors have been with us the organization should begin to consider that the directors may become familiar and how did this what we call familiarity threat so this is a threat to independence because he or she begins to know one and uh, other people other directors and the like and may not be that objective objective after that time so it is expected that we should look for other people to join us and allow the current non-executive director to move on so the disengagement is not because of maybe performance it could be if appraisal shows but it should be a standard practice that after a while let's say six years new appointment should take place while there should be an outgoing or outgoing non-executive directors. This is to bring freshness into the board of directors. Now let us consider the criticisms against the appointment of non-executive directors. Actually, some people see them that they actually lack industrial knowledge when it comes to the operations of that organization in which they are appointed to serve. So the debate can actually go either way because a non-executive director actually, they usually have robust knowledge in business may not be particularly to that organization or the industry but generally they are business tycoon they are they've been in business for a while but this is a standard criticism against the appointment of nets that they lack industrial knowledge another one is that they may not have sufficient time to serve because they are always a busy people and appointments over appointments on appointments in different places. So they may not actually have enough and sufficient time that an organization may actually require for them to serve the way and in capacity that is expected of them. Another criticism is this, that they can easily go with the executive officer the chief executive officer or the management staff decision reason being that they believe that those people are on ground and may have some 
or in-depth knowledge which they may not have. So that may turn them to become yes people as against people that are expected to be of critical thinking. But nevertheless, even with all this criticism, we will agree that the non-executive and the independent directors, they bring to the board of directors balance, freshness, constructive, constructiveness, criticism. Balance is their role. They are policemen and they are actually needed on the board. Mm -hmm. But just like any other thing in life, when it comes with advantage, definitely it must come with its own disadvantage. So, if you are yet to subscribe, I want to believe that you've enjoyed the lectures. Please click the notification button and subscribe to us. Up next, we are going to be discussing the directors and the law the directors and the law and this is one of the reasons you need to subscribe to us so that you can receive the notification after we are done with it and we release the video we are going to be looking at the past and the rights of directors in the next tutorial we are going to be examining the appointment election and removal of directors like the net that we spoke about but what what procedure should we actually follow so we are going to be examining it the duty and the legal obligations of directors we are going to be looking at shared dealings by the directors disqualifications of directors changing directors and also we are going to be examining NOCLA that is non-compliance to regulation by the board of directors and members of the board So, Bengal Atonji Frenchy, James Associates. We are value to life. We are value to your businesses.